Hey ferret fam, welcome back to the channel. The ultimate guide to ferret nutrition. Now this is going to be a massive one and there will be a linked article that I will have posted on my website by the time that you are viewing this video that has everything that I'm going to go over. It's going to have the little details and all the numbers, so go check that out as well as my resources that I used to create this video because it is important as pet parents to fully understand what we are feeding our our animals. You should be able to look at the back of a pet food label and be able to decipher what each ingredient means. But sadly for ferrets, that information can be really hard to come by. So for your convenience, I put it all together in one video and article. So unfortunately, the mass majority of ferret parents do not pay any mind to what they are feeding their ferrets. And they absolutely should because it does play a huge role in the ferret's lifespan, um, their quality of life. And part of that is the way that pet food is marketed. It is marketed as complete and balanced, which is actually a very misleading statement for anyone to use for any kind of diet because we truly do not know. Uh, market something as complete and balanced is really manipulative and it's false. And I think that people see this, they see the unregulated claims on pet food bags, healthy, holistic, good for your pet, etc., and assume that they are doing the best by their animals. When the truth is just because something is formulated for animals does not mean that it's going to be safe and healthy for that animal. And just like you would with a human child, you should absolutely be checking every label of any treat, any supplement, and any food that you are giving to your ferrets. And there are many examples out there of recent pet food recalls due to an imbalance of nutrients or complications due to specific ingredients that the pet food manufacturer chose to include. It's cheaper for the pet food manufacturer to not carry as much about your animals to include cheap ingredients, ingredients that are not considered human grade quality, ingredients that go against the very biology of the animal it is being made for. The longer people remain ignorant of this issue, the longer that these companies are able to get away with it. And because our animals can't speak, we have to do it for them. Before diving into the nutritional needs of our ferrets, I figured I would talk a little bit more about myself to those who are unfamiliar with me and my channel and what I do here. And so you know that I'm not just some random stranger on the internet. I do have a good knowledge base in the subject of pet nutrition. So I have around 16 years of animal care experience spanning across various species of animals from equines to ferrets, cats, dogs, you name it. I've worked on farms caring for livestock, boarding facilities that cared for cats and dogs, and I'm currently blogging and creating informative videos like this one with a focus on ferrets and ferret nutrition. I do plan to go back into the professional working world with dogs and cats when I move. I've completed pet nutrition courses, including the one that I am currently enrolled in by Southern Illinois University. I highly recommend this course. And once I finish this one, I plan to enroll in even more. And as of 2021, I can say that I have successfully helped over 130 ferrets switch to a natural diet from a kibble diet. All of that said, knowledge is ever evolving. I am no expert. You don't have to be a board certified veterinary nutritionist to know all of this information. All of this information is provided either for free or via paid courses that the average pet parent can take. So a couple helpful published resources that I reflect back on to almost daily are Nutrient Requirements of Dogs and Cats. This is published by the NRC, the National Research Council. This includes the requirements of nutrients that dogs, cats, puppies, and kittens require, and we do follow what they say for kittens for ferrets. So it is a really helpful resource for ferret owners. You have canine and feline nutrition. This is my textbook that I use for my nutrition course that I'm in right now, and it is just full to the brim of very detailed, very thorough, science-based, fact-based information on pet nutrition. You also have things like Natural Nutrition for Dogs and Cats. I really enjoyed this book and I actually have a review of it up on my website. And Pointing the Bone at Cancer by Dr. Ian Billinghurst. His last two books have a focus on holistic care and wellness and natural diets when the first two are a little bit more of an overview on all things nutrition. There are no recently published books with up-to-date information information on ferret diet and care. So it's common for us to borrow ideas from 
dog, cat, and even human nutrition because a lot of nutrition is pretty similar across the board. All right, so the first topic on ferret nutrition that I'm going to be discussing is energy and water. Our essential nutrients and non-essential nutrients, energy and water being very essential to your ferrets. And for energy, the main form that carnivores use is fat. Fat is also used for fat-soluble vitamin storage and for fatty acids. Energy density of the food is very important. This is the amount of energy in any given amount of food. And to measure density, we use something called kcal, which is equivalent to 1,000 calories. Metabolizable energy is the most common method used, which is the amount of energy left for tissues after losses in the urine and feces have been subtracted from the gross energy of the food. And energy density is greatly impacted by the nutrient composition of the food. If you would like to know the exact calculations on how to do this, all of that information can be found in the canine and feline nutrition textbook. And you have water, the most important nutrient for ferrets, and they require this to survive. The amount in the body depends on a couple different factors, such as age, percent of body fat. Water is a solvent and a medium that helps in nutrient transportation. It also helps with digestion, regulating body temperature, and milk synthesis. Your ferrets can obtain water via their food, which is the most common way that they get this, fat metabolism, and of course, drinking the water. Now in the food, it's a little bit tricky because kibble roughly only contains about 7 to 10 percent water when the average prey animal that they are designed to eat is about 70 to 80 percent water which makes them have a naturally low thirst drive so it's really important that their food is the main source of water they don't really have the instinct to continuously be drinking water from a separate source so this is why when you switch to a natural diet one of the first things that you're going to notice is they're going to drink less water from their bowl and fat metabolism, metabolic water comes from the oxidation of nutrients in tissues, which is generally around 5 to 10 percent of their water intake. And then you have drinking water. It is very important that you are supplying fresh, clean water daily, even if you feed a natural diet and they're getting most of their water from their food, just in case. And be sure to use bowls over the bottles that are commonly used for rodents. These do not promote adequate water intake, and they also promote teeth chipping. Now we move on to the digestive system. Ferrets are monogastric animals, meaning they have one simple stomach compartment, and it releases digestive enzymes. The ferret does not produce something called amylase to help aid in starch and carbohydrate digestion, so they have a harder time digesting and efficiently utilizing those types of ingredients. They also have a very limited ability to digest fiber. The digestion process includes the mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and then you have supportive organs like the pancreas and liver. The small intestine is important for fat and protein digestion, and they also help absorb nutrients. And then the large intestine is used to digest fiber and absorb water from the food. Overall, the ferrets have very small digestive compartments and intestinal transit time to help push meat and bone through quickly as to not let pathogenic bacteria, if present, take root in the ferret and harm them. If they had a similar system to an herbivore or even an omnivore, eating raw meat would put them at a much higher risk. Carbs provide energy from plant sources. This also includes fiber, but fiber doesn't provide any energy. Instead, it's broken down by the microbes in the colon, and fiber should be kept to under 5% in the ferret's diet. In processed pet foods, fiber often comes in the forms of pectins, cellulose, rice bran, guar gum, and so on. Despite what many major pet food companies like to think, carbs are not a necessary component in the diet of a strict carnivore. And they can often do more harm than good, especially in the ferret. The ferret should receive more than enough energy from the quality fat and proteins in their diet. And again, they lack those enzymes to efficiently digest and utilize carbs and starches. A very helpful chart that I like to refer to often in my research is the glycemic index chart that weighs how much risk a food has of raising blood sugar levels. And for ferrets, they are extremely sensitive to foods that are high on the glycemic index scale that will raise their blood sugar. They are very prone to a pancreatic cancer known as insulinoma, and we are beginning to think that it is mostly linked to carbs and starches in the food, raising their blood sugar levels and making it really hard for them to regulate it. We have fats, which are also called lipids, and these are very 
very high in energy. They're actually about 2.2 times higher than what is found in carbs. They also consist of essential fatty acids, and the ones that you need to focus on are omega-6 and omega-3. I do have an entire post on omega-3, so be sure to check that out on my website, but omega-3 can come from both plant and animal sources. Of course, for a strict carnivore, you're going to want to stick to the animal-based sources. Omega-3 can actually also come from plant and animal sources, but again, animal sources are going to be your best bet. The ferret requires a steady mix of both of those things with a healthy overall ratio of protein to fat, because in the wild, their diet would be mostly high protein and moderate fat. But unfortunately, most diets are going to be much higher in omega-6 due to the way that the prey animals were farmed and kept and fed. To remedy this, I recommend feeding one meal of wild-caught small oily fish. And you can do this every week. I am personally not a fan of salmon oil, which a lot of people do choose to feed instead of fish, and I will link those resources below so you can learn more on why I feel that way about salmon oil. And fats are very susceptible to oxidation, so you're going to want to make sure that anything that you feed is high in antioxidants to help prevent against oxidative damage. And then we have protein. Protein is found in all living things and also contains the building blocks, which are amino acids. There are 11 essential amino acids for both cats and ferrets. And protein can come from either plant sources or animal sources, but really a lot of what we've seen is ferrets just have a really tough time with plant-based protein sources. For example, peas seem to have a potential link for bladder stones and ferrets. I want to say probably 99% of the people who come to me saying that their ferrets have bladder stones were feeding a food with peas in it. And that is only one example. Animal-based sources often have more protein, more essential amino acids, and they are easily digested compared to the plant proteins biological value is a scale that ranks these proteins via their quality. Egg, for example, is at 100, and corn, which is a common ingredient in pet food, is only 54. It's been determined by pet care professionals that ferrets overall require a diet of 30 to 35 percent protein, 15 to 30 percent fat, minimal carbs, and fiber. And when formulating the diet at home, each prey animal is going to have different ratios. For example, an adult mouse on a dry matter basis contains 55.8 percent crude protein, 23.6% crude fat, and so on. I have a couple different examples in the linked article on my website. So as far as micronutrients go, this includes things like vitamins and minerals, but it can be further divided into water-soluble vitamins, fat-soluble vitamins, macro minerals, and trace minerals. And ferrets require just about the same things that you and I do. In a natural diet formulated at home, all of these things are going to be supplied via the meat and bone organs in the diet. You may have to do some natural supplements here and there, which I will talk more about later on. Many natural nutrients are unstable and they just cannot withstand the extrusion process that pet foods go through. So that's why you'll see a long list of synthetic artificial vitamins and nutrients being added into a pet food. In the linked article, I actually go over the nutrient requirements of every single vitamin for ferrets. So if you want that specific data, go check that out. I'm not going to list everything here, but um, as far as water-soluble vitamins, go, these dissolve in water and your ferrets are going to need this daily. So this includes the B vitamins and vitamin C. And B vitamins are supplied in large amounts in just the meat and organs in the diet. Vitamin C is found in small amounts in liver and eggs. It's not considered a essential nutrient for ferrets. It is still a healthy and helpful antioxidant. They are responsible for providing energy, preventing cell damage, and red blood cell formation. Fat-soluble vitamins, these dissolve in fat and include the vitamin a, D, E, and K. And these are mainly provided via organ meats and fat. They help with eye health, the immune system, acting as an antioxidant, blood clotting, and much more. We feed liver at 5% of their total diet, and this will supply their vitamin A requirements. For vitamin D, we feed fish and organs. And for vitamin E, because it is found in small amounts in meat and is really only found in sufficient amounts in plant products, we do feed a natural vitamin E supplement, which you can read more about 
linked in the linked article. And I know that you might be thinking, well, this is from plants. Why are we feeding this to ferrets? Why is it even needed then? Because the wild diet is so much different from what we can provide for our ferrets. So unless you are going out and feeding whole prey animals in their natural area where they reside, they're gonna probably be missing out on some nutrients. And vitamin E just happens to be one of those nutrients that is not found in large amounts in the meat that we can buy at the grocery store. Macro minerals are required in small amounts in the body, but still in larger quantities than trace minerals. This includes calcium, phosphorus, sodium, magnesium, and potassium. Supply blood pressure control and bone and muscle strength. Diets with meaty bones should offer enough calcium and phosphorus is going to be found in the meat and organs in the diet. Sodium can come from mussels, eggs, oyster, and fish, and magnesium is generally given via fish. Potassium is in meat and fish. Microminerals are required in even smaller amounts, and that includes iron, zinc, copper, iodine, selenium, and manganese. These minerals transport oxygen to the muscles and help protect the cells against damage. Some good sources of these nutrients include oysters, mussels, organs, and meat. Carrots are at a greater risk of zinc and or manganese deficiency when not consuming their natural prey from the wild. So these can be supplied specifically from oysters and mussels. And just a couple notes on specific nutrients for ferrets. Vitamin A must be supplied via retinol, not the plant form called beta carotene. Vitamin D must be supplied via D3 and not the plant form D2. Ferrets have a very limited ability to synthesize vitamin D from the sun, so they must have it in their food. Vitamin E, which we talked about briefly, is an antioxidant commonly lacking in meat-based foods. Taurine is a critical amino acid absolutely required in the diet of ferrets, and if they don't get enough, it can be seriously harmful. And taurine can be found in high amounts in heart meat, tongue, and fish. Diets that contain ground meats, or if you're feeding a ground up raw, pre-made raw diets as I call them, it's suggested to supplement with either additional heart meat or taurine powder. Overall, nutrient deficiencies are going to be more commonly seen in home prepared diets because it is entirely up to the pet parent to be consistently doing their research. So not just researching one time, doing a diet and feed that for years. You should be consistently looking into dog and cat raw feeding communities, human nutrition. You should be always on the lookout for new information. But that being said, kibble is not free from vitamin toxicity and deficiencies. And while all of this information is extremely overwhelming and you might be thinking if you do wanna do a home prepared diet that you have to calculate every nutrient to the exact amount, you definitely do not have to. It's actually something that I advise against doing because in doing so and focusing so hard on each individual nutrient that is where I commonly see deficiencies and excess occur because you're trying to get everything so exact which is not supposed to be how the ferret eats it's not supposed to be how you and I eat the only things that I calculate to the exact amount are going to be their organ requirements and supplements so let's weigh the different methods of feeding ferrets because there are a couple different options out there and the first option and the one that I recommend the most above all is a home prepared raw diet this is the most natural form of feeding ferrets it is backed by science ferrets have not evolved to digest grains starches and carbs efficiently but the big con of feeding raw is it's entirely up to you to be doing your research you don't believe in yourself enough to consistently be on the lookout for new information or do actually sit down and dedicate the time needed to learning about nutrition, then this isn't going to be the diet for you. But this doesn't mean that you have to be a nutrition expert. Treat the ferret like you would a human child. You know, we're not obsessing over what we're feeding our baby, but we are still conscious in what we are feeding them. And then you have home prepared cooked diets, something that you don't see very often in the ferret world, but it is a better option over processed pet foods. But the thing is cooked diets require even more careful calculation. Cooking denatures many nutrients, especially taurine. Ferrets should also never Never be fed cooked bones so you're gonna have to either do a calcium supplement or raw meaty bone raw meaty bone being the much preferred option and the cooked diet should still contain things like meat organ and bone I can't tell you how many cooked diets I've seen coming through the boarding facilities I've worked at for dogs and cats that just contain meat 
that have no organs in them that are literally just cooked chicken and rice. And then you have processed pet foods, and this includes freeze-dried raw foods and air-dried raw foods. So for freeze-dried raw, I do consider it a processed pet food because many of them are, of course, freeze-dried, which is a process that they go through, and a lot of them do contain some synthetic nutrition. I do like the brand Feline Naturals, which you can learn more about in a video that I have dedicated to the brand on my channel. And then you also have air-dried raw foods like Zeewee Peak. I have a video all on Zeewee Peak on my channel as well. These are more processed than freeze-dried raw, and they also do sometimes contain synthetics. And then lastly, you have kibble and wet food, which is, of course, the least preferred diet option. These diets contain ingredients that go against the ferret's biology. They contain a lot of synthetic nutrition, preservatives, food dyes, artificial flavor, and they are very, very heavily processed. They also have a very negative impact on your ferret's dental health. And you could argue my bias. I am obviously a raw feeder, but these are conclusions I've come to based on my education in pet nutrition, my extensive research into pet food, and years of watching dogs and cats come through the places that I've worked, deteriorating in all aspects of their health on dry food. And believe me, I would love for there to be a safe and healthy, convenient way of feeding, just like kibble, but there simply isn't anything out there like that. That being said, you are completely free to feed your ferrets whatever you want, but please be aware of the potential consequences. It's estimated around 50 to 70% of US ferrets over the age of three will develop cancer, and nine out of 10 of those ferrets develop it due to controllable factors such as diet. And this is not normal, something really does need to change. In countries where natural feeding is more common, your ferrets are living longer, less cases of dietary related disease, less cases of cancer in ferrets. Now that we have all the basics down on nutrient requirements for ferrets, I'm going to talk about the natural diet. Many criticisms of the raw diet have been long debunked. Things like pathogenic bacteria like Salmonella and E. coli, which is the big one that you're gonna see against raw diets, but the fact is these things are absolutely still present in kibble. In fact, more pounds of kibble have been recalled due to salmonella than raw pet food. But this is something that the average vet isn't going to say to you, the FDA isn't going to warn you about. It's all about raw pet food is dangerous. You're going to get salmonella. You're going to get E. coli. You're going to kill your pets. You're going to kill the young children in the house. These are all things that I've heard from pet care professionals. Risk of nutrient deficiency is not relevant for every pet parent. Most of us are doing our research just like we would for feeding our kids and feeding ourselves. Give pet parents a little bit more credit, please. Risk of bowel obstruction is still relevant to ferrets fed on any diet. In my time as a raw feeder, I have never heard of an instance of raw food being stuck in the digestive tract. You're more likely to experience something like that where ferrets eat their bedding or their toys, not so much the food. In the wild, the polecat, which is the ferret's direct relative, eats a diet of small prey like birds, frogs, rodents, with the occasional insect and or seafood. Unfortunately for us, it is near impossible to replicate that diet entirely. Even whole prey animals like mice and rats are raised at what we call an animal mill, a rodent mill, where they are kept in very stressed and cramped environments and they are fed cheap quality food, which has an overall negative impact on the quality of the meat. So the meat from a mouse raised in a rodent mill is going to be very, very different from the mouse that they would eat in the wild. So even if you feed a whole prey diet, extra care should still be taken to ensure nutrient requirements are being met. So we should always aim for grass-fed and finished meats, free range, pastured. For seafood, make sure it's wild caught and low in mercury. If you want to feed whole prey, try to get whole prey that was raised ethically and fed well, which you're better off just raising your own whole prey if you choose to do that. The base guideline that prey model raw feeders follow is 70 to 80% meat, 10% should be heart meat, especially for the ferret, 10 to 15% bone, 10% organs, and 5% of that should be liver, and 0 to 5% animal-based fiber, which is optional. But this guideline is not complete if you follow it strictly. This should absolutely be a adjusted for every single ferret. For detailed information on the components of each of those parts of the raw diet, check out my website. I have one on feeding meat, bone, organs, and supplements, so go check that out. I have yet to post one on animal
animal-based fiber, but this is optional. And if you remember from earlier on in this video, I talked about how ferrets have a limited ability to digest fiber. It is better when it's animal-based. It's still gonna go out the same way that it did coming in. It does help clean out the digestive tract and firm up stools. The calcium from the raw meaty bone in the diet should be enough to help keep stools firm. Variety is one of the most important things to follow when feeding a home prepared raw diet. You should be rotating through the animals that you feed and the cuts. Try and shoot for at least three to four different animal proteins each week and at least one of those should be a red meat source. The rule is the better kept the prey animal the more nutritious the meat is going to be. I love buying whole birds, whole chicken, Cornish hen, quail, and feeding different components of the bird throughout the week to really use up all of what the bird has to offer. As far as whole food additions go, I feed wild caught small oily fish, which provides fatty acids, magnesium, and iodine. I do one meal, which may be split into two different meals in the week, depending on what I'm feeling. Shellfish, which provides zinc, manganese, and fatty acids. These should be cooked prior to feeding. If sold half shell or no shell, it's already been cooked. I am doing right now one to two large greenlit mussels for five ferrets in the week and a couple oysters in the week. If you have blue mussels, you can feed a little bit more because they are smaller. I feed eggs weekly for hairball prevention and nutrients. I am doing one whole egg per two ferrets each week, so about two to three whole eggs total. If I'm doing quail eggs, I'll do one to two per ferret. I don't go crazy on the quail eggs. I do tripe for digestive health and manganese, and I'll throw a little bit in a meal or two. I'm not super picky with the amounts of this. This is considered a boneless meat. Bone broth, which provides joint and digestive benefits. I do about a splash every day, and I have a recipe on my website on how to make safe bone broth for ferrets. Furry rabbit heads provide animal-based fiber. I do a little bit each week, though a little bit isn't going to make a huge difference, and really if you want the benefits of fur, you should be feeding it a little bit more frequently than that, but that's just something that I do because I don't have a unlimited access to furry rabbit heads right now. Also feed a natural vitamin E oil supplement, which is one drop per ferret every other day. Which of these doses of additions and supplements I made at my own discretion? Conclusions were made based on my education in pet nutrition and personal experience with what works best for my ferrets. You can see pretty much exactly what I feed on my Instagram. I post meal pics very frequently throughout the week. I feed roughly about 10% of their body weight and that fluctuates throughout the year. I calculate amounts based on the guidelines that we follow for prey model feeding, and I will build off of that. In addition, I will base things sort of off of their stool consistency too. So if poos are too chalky and pale, I will decrease the amount of meaty bone next time and do more muscle meat. If they are too loose, I will increase the amount of meaty bone, decrease the amount of boneless meal. I'm also going to briefly talk about switching your ferrets to the natural diet, and transitioning your ferrets can be difficult depending on how consistent you are and how patient you are with your ferret. Ferrets are known to imprint on their food fed at weaning, which is most often kibble. I did used to offer a mentoring program, which gave people one-on-one -on -one mentoring during the transition, but I have decided to recently close it for the time being so that I could have more time to focus on my family. If you need help switching your ferrets, feel free to join our free Discord server where there are many raw feeders over there that would be happy to help you. In general, the rules of transitioning are as follows. The first thing that I have people do is get their ferrets used to eating wetter foods. So this is usually kibble moistened in water. You may have to do a couple pellets here and there. Sometimes even getting ferrets onto eating wet food of the food that they're eating can be difficult. And you're going to want to introduce a raw soup that includes meat, heart, organs, and a calcium supplement. Or you can go right into introducing a raw pre-made grind. You may need to mix some in with the wet kibble. And then introducing slivers of meat working your way up to bite-sized pieces and then getting them onto meaty bone and then formulate a meal plan. And this process can take anywhere from days to weeks to months. So that is all that I have for you today. I probably forgot a bunch of stuff, but go check out the linked article. It's going to have more details and all the exact nutrient requirements that ferrets need. And of course, there is so much more left to learn. I plan on continuing to share the things I learn in my nutrition schooling as well as my research. So be sure to hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video and you would like to learn more. Thanks to all of our channel members, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!